We all have played snake and ladder game in our childhood. Let's design it. It becomes really easy to write down the functional requirement if you can imagine the game. I think most of you would have already played this game once in a lifetime. And if you have if you have not played, it's, it's really okay. But if you have ever played the game or if you have seen that system, which an interviewer wants you to design, try to think about the system. Just very basic. And then just try to sort down everything what you have seen in the system and you will really come up with the requirements well. Let me try to write down all the functional requirements one by one so for the snake and ladder games. So The first requirement is we always design a system which should accommodate more than one user in the sense. So here, more than one player should be able to play the game. That's the first requirement. Okay, so multiple number of players should be supported by the system. And then the board, the size of the board uh, on which the snake and ladder is basically designed should be variable. So the system should accept a variable number m by n to design the board. So I would say so the size of the board should not be static. It should accept a parameter like m by n, right? The third requirement will be the number of ladders and the number of snakes in the board should be variable as well. So uh, when a game is created, depending on the level of the game, the number of snakes and the number of ladders in the board should be designed. Cool. And the next one is uh, the game should also let us use maybe more than one dice, right? Generally, we use only one dice in this game, but it would been become interesting if we have maybe more than one dice, like two dice for playing the game. So let's accommodate this in our system as well. Yeah, so we should have a possibility to use more than one dice. And the next thing is that we should be able to basically log the details while playing the game, the state of the game, right? It might be useful at the end when someone is taking a decision or someone wants to see how he played the game or how his game statistics went. So I would say log information. And the next requirement can be uh, how will the game start? So if I remember how we generally play this game is someone just starts the game by throwing the dice randomly. So we can hit, we can take the same thing here as well. So randomly, the computer selects a person who starts the game. Cool. What's the next one? Uh, the next should be the game will have two states, right? The start state and the end state. So this is basically the system will decide when the game has ended. And how the system will decide basically if some any of the player has already reached the hundredth position or the final position, then the game has ended and he will be the winner. The next requirement which should be taken care in mind, like the snake and ladder should not form a loop, right? Because uh, if there is a snake like this, and the snake is here, and when the person comes here, it is it gets to the snake, then it has to move down to the end of the tail of the snake. And if you have a ladder here, which goes directly to the same place, then then the game is wrong. It will be a, a, it will be something like a, a infinite loop in which the player will keep on moving as soon as he play or he gets a score. So we should not have some situations like this in the game while designing the board or while placing the snakes and ladder on the board. Okay, I think. These are normal eight requirements, which are very clear requirements we should keep in mind while designing the case, designing this game. And the thing what the interviewer wants us to show is our object-oriented programming skill when someone asks us this question, like design a uh, snake and ladder game. So we'll try to start with the use case diagram first, and then we will draw the class diagram. 
Using the class diagram, you can easily write the code using any language like Python or Java to build your classes. So the use case diagram basically shows us like a very top overview of the whole system, right? So let's try to draw a very simple use case diagram uh, and the actors what we will have here. So if we talk about the use cases first, let's see one, maybe let's draw a few more. Yeah, and then let's draw our actors. So I take a pen here and So this is our system and this is the user. One of the use case which will be there is basically starting or ending the game, right? And as we discussed during the requirements gathering that the system will start and end the game. Start or end game. And who will do this? The system will do this. And then the next one is basically playing the game. So you throw the dice or play the game and the user does that. And when the user does that, the system basically responds and changes the user's location or moves him up or down on the board. And the next one is the logging. And the logging information is done by the system. So you can say this is the basic use case diagram, what we have here. So let's go on, move on, and try to design the class diagram. So I'll take some space here. As in my previous videos, basically, when we are trying to draw, trying to build a system, always start with the smaller components first. Get those entities and then try to build the bigger entities on top of that. So we'll do the same here as well. So first, what are the things which comes to mind when I have to basically design the snake and game? First is the snakes, the ladders a dice and maybe a board which basically comprises of the snakes and ladders and a dice basically is used to play the game then also i need a player because the player and its state is important for me as well and then one more thing which comes to mind is like the display because we want to so show what's going on in the game right what's the score of the person how they are playing how they're doing well good so let's start by first drawing okay I Triangle. So we'll start with maybe a dice. Yeah, I take a black pen. Yeah, so I write the class name here. So it is dice. And one possible properties of this class would be the number of sides of the dice and will be an integer and a possible method in the class can be get value maybe. And would return an integer as. Okay, the next one what we have here is the class diagram is the snakes, right? And the ladder. So let's try to draw them as well. Snake. And one more for ladder. Snake. Ladder. What's the information we want to save about the snake thing? The important thing in the game is like the starting point of the snake, the starting cell where the snake is, and the grid of m by n and the tail of the snake where the end point of the snake is, right? On the back end, we just need these two information which is important for us. On the front end, when someone is basically writing the code to draw the snake on the user interface, they can draw it in a different orientation style using different images, but they should keep in mind that the mouth of the snake and the tail of the snake should follow, should have two coordinates and that coordinates has to be saved in the back end to be used. So we can just use here a pair and we give this parameter name as snake and we, the data type we can use is pair of integer comma integer nice 
and one possible method can be here get position which can return the pair and the same here will be the ladder and i would say the variable name is ladder and we can depict the ladder by two points which is the starting of the ladder and ending of the ladder and we can have a method called get position which will return a pair again. Okay, so we have now the snake, the ladder, and the dice. The next one, let's try to design the player class, which is again an important class which we want. So we pick the player class. What will be the properties of the player class? One would definitely be can be an ID, which can be a hash or an integer. Let's take it an integer. One can be the name of the player, which would be displayed on the UI maybe. So we take it as a string. And then there can be a color, which is associated to the user, like in a normal game. When you play a snake and ladder game, there are colors and those buttons are of different colors. So I would just assign a color as well. Color, and then we can just take it as a list of RGB, that's three values. And we can all, we should also have the position of the player, right? So we can have a pair position and we can make it as a pair of integer, comma integer, which is X comma Y in a three by, in a n, n by n grid. And what are the possible methods which should be there in the player class? We should have getter and setter for all of these variables. So we say get position. And one more important function which should be here is play, right? When the player calls this function, then basically and it might return a position. It will, he'll throw a dice, he'll get the dice values, and then the player's position will move according to the score what he get, got get on the dice. Nice, so th this is our, this completes our player class. The next class, what we should have here is the board class. So let me just try draw this board class here. So it's say, And what things the board class should have? It should have a board size. So I would say board. It can be a list of M by N, right? Because it, it's easier to take it like M by N because when you draw something on the screen, it's in terms of pixels, right? So if you save some information in terms of M by N, it will be easy while you are manipulating this in the you in the front end, or maybe you are trying to do some write some logic in the back end as well. You can also take it as a one single list, and then if you take it as a single list, then basically you have to divide it into chunks when you read it back on the front end. So and then the next one, it should have the ladders and the snakes. So it will have a list of ladder class, ladder class objects, and list of snake class objects so let's say ladder ladders maybe and i would say ladder list then you'll have snakes you'll have snake list yeah that makes i think that that's some reasonable and what methods we can have we can have methods here like place snake so when building the board, it will place the snake in specific location and it can have a place ladder. And you might even think of some more methods if you go a little bit deeper. Okay, so we have now the snake, ladder, dice, and the player and the board. Next one, what we want to have is a display class, right? Because we want to display all the information. And then we will finally draw the singleton class, which will be our game class. So I draw here display. And what we'll have in display, we'll have a score that would be possibly an integer. We'll have 
uh, the dice and the, what was the latest score on the dice to be shown. So that's also good. So we make a dice class and then we can have play, we'll have a player and we want to show how the player position, what the color of the player is, what the name of the player is. So I would say players and we'll have list of player class objects. And then we would have a board to be displayed. So board and it's an object of board. And what can be a possible method here is display or show anything we want. OK, so now comes the last class, which will be our game class. And this defines our system finally. So what will be the attributes in the game class? The first important thing is like we'll have players who will be playing the game. So we say players and it will be a list of players who will play the game. Then the dice, if you're playing with more than one dice, then the game consists of two dices. Then we'll have a list of dice as well. So let's say dices and I would say list of dice class objects. And then it will have a board. So board of type, and then it will have a level which will define what level the game is being played. One possible method what it can have is create board. Right, and one other possible method it can have is select the starting player. Select who starts. Nice, so I think we, through almost all of the class. Now let's try to draw, draw the association and the compositions, how, how the classes will be connected. One thing is that the ladder and the board basically defines the composition. So the board would be composed of lattice. So we draw the show the composition here. And then the similar will be for the snakes. Right, and then this will again be similar. The player and the game, there will be a player, a list of players basically inside the game class. And then the connection, the dice, you will have dice so it's a diamond. I'm not pretty good at this drawing, okay. And then you'll have the board connected to the game. And this will be basically an aggregation. And this also will be an aggregation. And we say these two as the aggregation basically because the display can exist without the game, right? They can be a game without a display. Same with the board can exist, but there, there's this not make sense to have ladders and snake if there is no board so that's why we basically say this is a composition and the other ones are aggregations so i think we finished with drawing the class diagram of the snake and ladder game and i think you can just take this class diagram and if the interviewer wants you to write the classes you can explicitly write the classes as well but conceptually explaining anything to an interviewer in terms of understanding of an object oriented programming skills i would say this should be sufficient okay guys thank you and if this video helped you guys in any way please do like and subscribe because it motivates to basically make more such videos thank you so much and bye bye